Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we will be focusing on the long forgotten, because you see, deep in the depths of over a decade of One Piece, we've had a few characters slip through the cracks and just, you know, vanish from this world. Which you might think is fairly common, given that the series has quite literally hundreds upon hundreds of characters to keep track of, but it really isn't. Oda generally does quite a fantastic job of keeping up with the old, and if you give me almost any secondary or even a minor character, I can probably tell you where they are right here and now. For example, Johnny, and Yasaku. These two are often mistakenly thought of as forgotten because they haven't been seen properly since the Arlong days. However, from cover stories, we know that they gave up the life of bounty hunting and became fishermen at Kokoyashi Village where they remain to this very day. Good on them. And as for another example, we can look to Aisa, the incredibly talented mantra girl from Skypiea. She is not forgotten at all, and currently she has a job selling balloons at Wagamu Land, a theme park inspired by Usopp and Usopp-related accessories, namely rubber bands. And you know what? Even animals don't get forgotten, like Choo Choo. These days he owns and operates his own gigantic pet food store. And that is the kind of detail that Oda puts into 99% of his characters, even after they've long since faded from relevance. However, there is that 1% who have seemingly just vanished from this universe entirely. And they are known as the forgotten characters of One Piece. Meanwhile, you, dear viewer, are known as the person who forgot to subscribe to the Grand Line Review. The act of doing which will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. So let's just refresh your memory about that, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. And also just very quickly, this video is sponsored by Normal Brands with a Z at the end. And here you can acquire expressive hoodies, sweaters, and even electronics with positive, inspiring messages to go out and tackle the world. They have a range of gear for men, women, and children, and currently have a buy one, get one 50% option available. Sounds pretty solid. As does their tagline, which is Normal Brands. Be you, that's more than enough. Which is very uplifting, I like it. So do check them out, link in the description below. But for now, let us check out some forgotten characters. And we'll start with the obvious candidate, which will be Gein, also known as the standout feature of Baratier and someone who has always dwarfed the actual antagonist to me. However, I have also always found it a bit strange that after their defeat, we never heard a single word of what happened to Don Krieg's armada. And to be fair, things didn't look particularly good for Gein. After rather heroically choosing to throw his gas mask to Luffy and thus taking in a theoretically fatal dose of MH5, deadly gas. However, he did very much leave this series with a lot of promise and his final words are still engraved into my mind to this very day. I may only have a few hours left to live. It may be foolish for a half dead man to commit himself to anything, but it's good medicine. From now on, I'm steering my own course. And then allegedly, Gein also told Sanji that he looked forward to encountering Luffy in the Grand Line. So look, in any other series, I would say that this is quite a nice send off to the character. You know, letting him sail away into the distance to preserve that strong image in the minds of readers, watchers, and in fact, the actual characters. But this is One Piece and death is, well, it's not really a thing that happened too often in the pre-time skip era or even the post-time skip era, which is why we very much now have to put up with the constant theories of every new character introduced with a mask or having a silhouette being Gein. Because if Pell can survive a city destroying bomb, then sure, Gein can survive a bit of the old poisoning. It certainly wouldn't be the most outrageous thing that's happened in One Piece. But it's not just Gein either. It's easy enough to accept that sure, he may have passed on, but the entire Krieg armada has been seemingly forgotten about by the series. Don Krieg himself is almost certainly still alive. And the only reason I can think as to why we haven't seen him featured in a cover story or something else Else is because Oda doesn't want to reveal anything about what happened to Gein. If he is alive, then Oda doesn't want to blow that quite yet. And if he is dead, then Oda doesn't want to confirm that in a very morbid visual manner. Instead, preferring to have our last image of Gein being a proud and changed man. Whichever the case is, it has led to both Gein and the rest of the Krieg pirates being forgotten about by One Piece. And we're going to stick with East Blue for our next character, the frequently mentioned Captain Kuro. Frequently mentioned by the fan base, that is certainly not by the series, because Whatever happened to him? We'll probably never find out. Because after enacting his, uh, his questionable plan on Syrup Village, Luffy delivered a stunning headbutt to our cat-loving captain. Which when you think about it, kind of adds insult to injury because Kuro's whole thing was that he was supposed to be like the intelligent pirate. One of the smartest of all of the people in East Blue, according to Oda actually. And as such, Luffy chose to take him down by using his head in the only way Luffy possibly can, literally. He then rather unceremoniously threw Kuro to 
towards his former crew, and that was the last we saw of the cat captain, at least in the manga anyway. In the anime, there was this filler scene during Logtown where it showed that Kuro had returned to piracy and he was alerted to Luffy's new bounty, which was a kind of cool scene actually. This is a great example of filler that really works for me because I can imagine Oda doing something like this. With that said, Oda didn't in fact do it. And as a result in canon, we have no idea what happened to Kuro because he has never been seen again in any way, shape or form. No cover stories, no nothing. And he certainly doesn't have the Gein excuse of, you know, more than likely being dead either. At best, maybe Kuro has a motivational excuse though because his entire arc was focused on exiting the life of piracy and finding some kind of peace. So it seems more likely that even without the riches he was seeking, Kuro just up and retired. But I would love to know what that retirement consisted of because that's what we get to see with most villains in One Piece or even side characters or even really minor characters. Because guess what? To name yet another example, we even know what Disco is doing these days. Do you remember Disco? I sort of do. He was the owner of the human auction house on Saba de Archipelago, and right now he is a seemingly homeless alcoholic, roaming around the lawless areas of Saba de, repeatedly stabbing wanted posters of Luffy, Law, Kid, and even Ray Lee. My point is though, if we're going to take the time to catch up with someone as irrelevant as Disco, then why not Kuro? I'm not quite sure about this one. He's just another example of a forgotten character in One Piece. And now let us meet another who we find in the form of the captain of the Rumbar Pirates, Calico Yorki, best known as the guy with the things on his face, which fun fact resembled the katakana for Yo, which makes sense because that's his name, Yoki. But this is extraordinarily similar to the Gein situation. In Yoki's tragic story, he contracted a disease. So he, along with the rest of the infected crew, decided to part ways and exit the Grand Line via the Calm Belt, or at least they tried to. So our last image of Yoki, much like Gein, is sailing off heroically into the distance, more than likely to die a very, very painful death. And when I was reading it, this did strike me as a bit strange because because the thing about Brooke's backstory is that it inevitably leads to tragedy anyway. Basically, the crew continue sailing and they get attacked by miscellaneous enemy pirates, thus resulting in all of their deaths. So the question pops up, why not just include Yorki in that event rather than doubling up on the tragedy with this whole disease business? But the answer to that is simply continuity. Because way back in the reverse mountain arc, Crocus stated that he heard from a reliable source that the Rumbar pirates had fled the Grand Line. So we needed a situation where the Rumbar pirates both fled the Grand Line and remained in the Grand Line, and so the Yorkie tragedy was born. But that still doesn't change the massive question mark looming over him. Once again, it's the same as the Gein situation. Either Oda doesn't want to confirm that he is alive right now, or he doesn't want to take away our final image of the former captain. Either way, that makes Yorki a forgotten character. But let's move on to someone more comical now, like say, Wanzi. Yeah, he'll do. The undisputed master of ramen kenpo and quite possibly its sole practitioner. Wanzi really is a prime target for cover story material. Goofy characters like him often end up doing really, really well being given a minor side quest like Gadatsu and his journey to open up a hot spring with Koza's uncle. But not only was Wanzi not given his own cover story, which is an abomination in and of itself, but he has not appeared again at all, which I do need to emphasize is very strange strange. Because even if you are just a minor One Piece character, it is almost guaranteed that you will appear again, even if it's only in the background somewhere. With that said, I should of course mention that Wanzi did indeed appear in One Piece film Gold, proposing to a woman on a Ferris wheel. And as much as I would like to congratulate Wanzi on his assumed engagement, film Gold is not canon, and Wanzi is still very much forgotten in the actual series. Let's get back to villains now, because Arlong is another great choice for a forgotten character, except he's a bit special, because he did have a prominent role in the Fisher Tiger flashback, which is great, it really is. It expanded upon Arlong and gave us some great context as to why he became the monster he did in regards to Kokuyashi Village, which once again, that's great and all. But in terms of modern day, we still have no idea what has become of Arlong or any of his crew apart from Hachan. We just know that he was arrested by the Marines and given how dangerous he is, you would think that a natural spot for Arlong likely would have been impelled down. However, he was not present there, forcing us to assume that he is being held in some sort of East Blue Pleasure prison, one that he could potentially quite easily escape from. I don't know, he's a weird one because despite the fact that he was an East Blue antagonist, he is still one of the most pronounced villains in the series. So I do find it a bit odd that we have never seen or heard anything regarding his current situation. Because look, you can include him in as many flashbacks as you want, but when we consider the modern day, he is still a very, very forgotten character. As is Crab Hand Gyro. Do you 
Remember Crabhan Gyro? I try not to. But he was a human pirate worth a surprisingly impressive 73 million berries. So you know more than post Alabaster Zoro. This guy would have been quite dangerous in the first half of the Grand Line. However, when sailing to Fishman Island, Crab and Gyro and his crew were forced to join the new Fishman pirates. Although they would eventually escape, but not before being wrecked by Hody Jones, who quite purposely left them alive to spread the word of terror to the rest of the human race. So look, Crab and Gyro is alive. And you might think it's a bit ridiculous and quite the joke for me to bring up someone like this, but I am 100%, maybe not 100%, but I am 85% serious. Characters like Crab Hand Gyro do not often get forgotten about in One Piece. They go on to make strange minor appearances, but this guy hasn't. And weirdly enough, that lack of anything to mention is worth mentioning. And as for another obscure existence, remember Baz Kavil? Or more accurately, Baz, Kerville, and Princess? You know, the three guys that were such good friends that they permanently share an outfit. Well, this is another strange comical Oda character or characters who would have done very well with the cover story or just a minor appearance somewhere, but they were never heard of again following any sobby. A great shame, IMO. But quite possibly the greatest shame and greatest forgotten character, also a staple of any sobby, is of course Soga King. I still find it quite shocking to think that Soga King has not made a post time skip appearance. And there has been ample opportunity for him to do so, whether it be Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, Dress Rosa, probably not Whole Cake Island for reasons I'm not quite sure of, but even now on Wano, and yet he still remains hidden in the shadows. I mean, I guess we have Usopp who tends to mysteriously go missing whenever Soccer King appears, that's a bit weird, but it's still not quite the same, is it? I would be very eager to know what became of the Sniper King because I have not forgotten him. And that is because Sniper Island exists in my heart. And as such, it would be absolutely impossible to forget Soccer King. However, has One Piece forgotten Soccer King? Almost certainly, along with all of these other characters who I am strangely curious to see once more, although with each chapter, each volume, each year, and even each decade that passes, it is becoming clearer and clearer that they will remain forgotten characters. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.